In today's video we're going to be making this four-wheel drive Bluetooth car that is controlled by keyboard key presses using a Python script. It's able to turn left and right and move forwards and backwards. Let's take a look at the parts needed for this project. We will be using an Arduino with standard firm matter loaded onto it which allows us to use Python scripts to control it. We will also be using a HC05 to communicate wirelessly over Bluetooth with the device. The default board rate of the HC05 is 9600. We need our Arduino to match this. We will be using an Adafruit motor driver shield to control our four motors, as this isn't supported in standard Fermata, which we would usually use to control the board via Python. We will need to modify standard Fermata to work with the motor shield. First, we need the Adafruit library. This is under Sketch, Include Library, Manage Libraries, then search for Adafruit Motor Shield. There are two versions of the Motor Shield. The version I bought is version 1. So I will install version 1 here. If you have V2 then choose that option. Now that we have the required libraries, open Standard Fermata. At the very top of the code, we need to include the library that we just installed which is the AF motor underscore H library. We can then set the script to use our four motors by typing AF DC motor, then create a motor name. I'm just using motor 1 to 4 then in brackets type the number of the motor. Next we need to create an integer variable to set whether the motor's direction should be forwards, backwards, turning left, or turning right, or not moving at all. Let's call it motor direction and give it the value of 5 for now. In order to change this value in Python, we need to create a constant variable. These types of variables can be used to speak to the Arduino over the Fermata protocol. Let's call this motor underscore direction and set the value to 0x01, which is the hexadecimal equivalent of 1. Next, press Ctrl and F to open the find pane and search for void sysx. Press Enter twice to go to the second search result. Under the first open curly bracket, Enter down a few lines, this section allows us to define what happens when our constant variable receives a value externally. Which in this case would be coming from our Python script. We can run a few if statements which check the value of the motor direction and depending what is received, either a 1 to 4. We can set our variable for motor direction to the corresponding number. If no number is received via our constant variable then the default number is set to 5. Next press Ctrl and F to open the find pane again and search for Fermata.begin. As we will be using the HC05 module for Bluetooth, we need to set the baud rate to 9600, which the module uses as default. Next, scroll down to the void loop, and under the byte section, enter a new line. Here we can check to see what value has been received through our motor direction variable, and set the direction of the motors accordingly. We will set the value of 1 to equal all motors moving forwards at once. Here we set the direction and the speed for the motors. This will constantly run in a loop to check for any signals from our Python code. If the motor direction received is 2, then we can set all the motors to move backwards like so. If the value received is 3 then we want to turn the car, so two of the motors have to be moving forward whilst the other two need to move backwards. Similarly, if we receive the value of 4, then we do the same, but swap which two are moving forwards and backwards. If no value is received, which means that the default value of 5 is given, then we want all the motors to stop moving, so we set the value to release. Once this is complete, we can upload the code to our Arduino and close the Arduino ID. Next we will need an Arduino motor driver shield like this one. The shield I'm using is a L293D motor control shield. To use this shield with Bluetooth, we need to access the 0 and 1 pins, which are the RX and TX pins of the Arduino. Here we can see, on the controller board, that these pins have solder on them. We can solder two wires onto these like so. 
This will allow us to use the pins when connecting to the wires. We also need four TT gear motors, four wheels, a screwdriver, a breadboard, a 1000 ohm resistor, a 2000 ohm resistor, a few male to male jumper wires, a few male to female jumper wires, and finally two 3.7 volt batteries with a battery holder. Now let's connect these all together. First take your motor driver, where there are two sets of five terminal pins, take your first TT gear motor. Connect the black ground wire to the first pin of 5. Then connect the positive red wire to the second pin of 5. Then take another TT gear motor and connect the black wire to the fourth pin of 5 and the red wire to the fifth pin of 5, leaving an empty space for the middle terminal. Now turn your board around and do the same with the other set of 5 terminals with the ground wire in the first terminal, then the positive wire in the second, then leave a gap for the middle terminal. Then the ground and positive wire again in the fourth and fifth terminals for the third and fourth TT gear motors. All four motors should now be connected. Now place the shield on top of your Arduino board. This should slot in place. Next connect the battery connector. The ground wire should go into the right of the two blue terminals. And the positive wire should go into the left of the two blue terminals. Now let's set up our HC05. First connect the HC05 to your breadboard on the end column of the first section. Then on the same column add a 1000 ohm resistor which bridges the breadboard partition leaving a column available at the end on the second section of the breadboard. Then add a jumper wire between the RX pin of the HC05 and the end of the 1000 ohm resistor. Then add a 2000 ohm resistor between the jumper wire and the ground bus of the breadboard. This will convert the 5 volt current down to around 3 volts which the HC05 requires. Then add a jumper wire between the ground of the HC05 and the ground bus of the breadboard. And add another jumper wire between the VCC of the HC05 and the positive bus of the breadboard. Next add a male to female jumper wire. Connecting the TX pin of the breadboard to the RX pin of the Arduino. This will go to pin 0 on the motor shield and connect to the wire we soldered on earlier. Let's also connect the RX pin of the HC05 to the TX pin of the breadboard. Our RX pin goes through the resistors first so connect a male to female jumper wire on the end of the 1000 ohm resistor and to pin one of the motor shield which uses our second soldered wire. Next connect a male to female jumper wire between the ground bus of the breadboard and the ground pin of the motor shield. Here you can see it has a minus symbol next to it. Then connect another male to female jumper wire between the positive bus of the breadboard and the positive pin of the motor shield, which has a plus symbol next to it. Now that our HC05 is fully connected, we can test that it's working by inserting the batteries into the battery holder. We should see that a light will turn on, on our motor shield and the HC05 will start flashing. That's great. The HC05 is currently flashing rapidly as it's searching for a Bluetooth device to pair to. We need to connect it to our computer. If your computer doesn't have Bluetooth, you can use a USB to Bluetooth converter. You should then go to Bluetooth and other devices, then turn Bluetooth on and click Add Device. Then click Bluetooth again and select HC05 from the list. Type in the default password, which is either 1234 or 0000, then connect. Your HC05 will now be connected to your computer and show up in the paired devices. Next, let's write some Python code while our wheels are still off to test that all the motors are working. Open idle and create a new file 
Let's import PyFirmata so that we can connect to the standard Firmata script. From PyFirmata import Arduino and Util. Next let's define our board. The COM port may be different on your computer. On my computer the HC05 will be connecting to either COM port 5 or 6, so I will type 6 for now. We also have to set our board rate. Remember that the HC05 uses the board rate of 9600. Our Python script has to match this. We can then define the pins that our Arduino uses to control the motor speed. These are pins 11, 3, 5, and 6. They are all digital pins that use pulse width modulation which means they can take a variable value between 0 and 1. Next we need to create a variable called motor direction. This is the same name as the constant variable which we created in the Arduino Firmata sketch earlier. Give it the hex value of 1 as default. We now need to create a function that sends a number to the constant variable in Arduino which will control its direction. Pass the value of direction to it. Use the board.sendSysX function and pass through the constant variable motor direction as well as a direction variable. Next let's create a function called forwards. Here we can call the set motor direction variable that we just created and pass through the value of 1. This correlates with the Arduino code we wrote earlier, which says if the value 1 is received, all motors should move forwards. So all motors will be configured to the forwards direction when using this line of code. We then need to write a value of 1 to all the motors to get them to start moving in this configured direction. Let's get the motors to run for one second by using the board pass time function and passing a value of 1 into it. Then set all the pins to 0 which will stop the motors from moving. We can now copy the entire forwards function and paste it below. Change the name to backwards and set the motor direction to 2, which will configure the motors into a backwards enabled state. So that when we enable the pins, the motors will now move backwards. Paste the function again below and change the name to turn left and set the motor direction to 3, then do the same for turn right, setting the direction to 4. We can then call all the functions at the bottom of our script. This will mean that the motors will move backwards for 1 second, then forwards for 1 second, then motors M1 and M2 will move in the opposite direction to M3 and M4. Then the same but in vice versa directions. Let's test this out. That's great, it seems to be working fine. Let's now assemble our car. Let's start by sticking the Arduino onto the breadboard by using double-sided tape. You may need a few layers to get it well stuck. Next add four wheels onto the four motors of the Arduino. We need M1 and M2 to be on one side of the car and M3 and M4 to be on the other side of the car. This placement is important so that the wheels can turn together on their corresponding side. Let's also add double-sided tape to the top of the motors and stick them on the underside of the breadboard. Space the wheels far enough apart so that the car is stable, and ensure that no wires or parts are catching against the wheels. Lastly, add some more double-sided tape to the top of the breadboard and stick on the battery holder. We can then add the batteries to the battery holder. And then run the Python code again. Hold the car so that it doesn't drive itself too far. Now that we've got the car built and the wheels working, let's finalize the Python code so that we have full control of when the motors move and the direction we want them to turn in. First let's import a few more libraries, import threading, then from threading import thread, also from pi input, import key and listener. Next let's create a variable called value1 and give it a value of 1. This will control when our wheels should be powered or not. Declare this global variable in all our direction functions. Next let's create a while true loop, which checks if value1 is equal to 0. If it is then we want to provide power to our motors to make them move. Again, add this to all our functions. If value1 doesn't equal 0 we can use an else statement. Remove our board pass statement and indent the code that sets all our pins to zero so that our wheels stop turning if value 1 equals 1. Remove the board pass time at the end of the function and replace it with a break statement to break out of the function if value 1 no longer equals 0. Again, make this change to all our movement functions. 
We can also delete our function calls as these will be controlled by keyboard presses rather than calling them directly at the bottom of the script. Let's then start a listener that will check for keyboard presses. When a key is pressed set it to call a function called on press. When a key is released get it to call a function called on release. We can then start an instance of threading which will call this get keys function so that it runs continuously in parallel to the rest of our script. Create a new thread and set its target to get keys, then start the thread. Next at the top of our script let's create a new variable called drive thread and set its value to none. We need to check whether a drive thread is currently running before starting a new one whenever a direction key is pressed, which this variable will be used to do. Scroll down and let's now create the onRelease function, which checks if the WAS or D keys have been released. If one of those keyboard keys have been released then we want to set value 1, which controls our motor power to 1 so that all the motors stop moving. We then need to check if a drive thread is currently active. If it is then we can use the thread join method to close it. Let's now create our onPress function which checks if the WAS or D keys have been pressed. Let's create an if statement for each option. First we want to set value 1 to 0 so that power is sent to our motors. Then we want to check if there is currently a drive thread running. Only if a drive thread isn't running do we want to start a new thread. Otherwise we will get a backlog of new threads continually in the loop. So if there are no drive threads, we want to start a new drive thread and target the corresponding direction function. In the case of the W keyboard key we want to call the forwards function. Then we can start the thread. We then can create a similar function for the AS and D keys, just changing the target of the thread to the correct directional function. So turn left for the A keyboard key, turn right for the D key, and call the backwards function for the S key. Finally we can use an else statement to set the motor direction to 5 if none of these keys are pressed, if we remember back to our Arduino code. This will stop power going to our motors and stop them from moving. Let's now just check our script. I forgot to dedent all the if statements so let's do that now. We can then run the code and test it out. Here we can see that pressing W makes the car go forwards, S makes it go backwards, A makes it turn to the left, and D makes it turn to the right. My car is slightly too heavy at the back where the battery sits so it occasionally mounts on two wheels when I move forwards. I could fix this by adding a counterweight to the front. Or reposition the battery holder slightly, but I'm happy with it for now. That concludes the build for the four-wheel drive Bluetooth car. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this.